Welcome back to the daily node breakdown of DaVinci Resolve Fusion. Today's node is the loader node. So let's get started by creating a new fusion composition. We'll make it two seconds. Drag it in our timeline and let's launch fusion. Now, if you remember in our media in node, we can just simply drag our media load it up for instance this EXR sequence and once we choose what layer we want to look at say we want to look at the AO we can see our AO if we need to see our combined we can see our combined our nice little cheesy EXR from Blender featuring our uh, default cube and what's great about using the media in for EXRs is we can just pick this layer we need only our emit layer and if we go to our channels it's automatically selecting our RGB and our alpha for what we need for those channels same with if we go to our glossy direct you can see it automatically switch our channels and this is great it's a nice easy workflow because we can just cut copy and paste this and just keep changing layers and stack it up and do any composition we need to do however the problem with this is if you have, this is just two seconds and it's probably about 10 gigs of data. So if you've got thousands of different sequences with hundreds of different frames in each sequence, your media pool can get pretty huge, pretty fast. So another way to do this is using the loader node. So. If we add a loader node, it's automatically going to bring up your uh, your files, select which sequence you want to bring in, and it brought those in and merged them together because I had that selected. Let's go ahead and delete these. So within this loader node, what this is doing is this loading that file. But the only difference is we don't have the option to select a layer. And in order to view the other layers, we have to go to the format tab, go to the channels and select what channels we want to view. So if we wanted to look at the, uh, say combined color, we're going to have to select combined R, combined G and combined B to be able to select those. And if we had alpha selecting the alpha channel, so that's the only difference, but you can see we are not adding media, it's just reading directly from disk. So this can come in handy in a lot of different scenarios. So the loader node, basically you're telling it what file to load. And if you want to use proxy files, you use, use proxy files. Um, just like our media in, we've got our global in and out. We can change, we can change our trim. We can hold the first and the last frame. We can reverse it and we can loop it. And one additional one is for missing frames, whether it fails, holds previous, holds uh, output color or has an output color or just waits for that next frame. So however you want to, uh, mark that missing frames you mark it I've never ran into missing frames as far as the import tab goes it's the same as the media aim you got the option of full res or interlace methods for your format you may have to change this depending on uh, how your EXR is set up I usually just leave it to format but if I know I'm bringing in ZDEP and different stuff that's integer 16 say from blender I'll switch this to integer 16 for your pixel aspect ratio, whether it's from the file or if it's the default or if you got a custom pixel aspect ratio. Your interpret mode or your import mode, whether it's normal or it's a two thirds pull up or pull down. And this only depends on if say you did your VFX in 24 frames and you've got footage that's 23.97 and just to fix all those issues so it plays back smooth but leaving it at normal is pretty good. You can also detect it if you need to. The cache 
when you play this, it's going to load in the cache. You can see it takes a little while to uh, process all that AXR data. But in here you can uh, change your settings for the cache. If you right click on it, you can clear your cache files if you want. Down here your check boxes for make your alpha solid, invert your alpha, post malt uh, by your alpha, or you can swap field dominances if you, if you want. Now just like in the media in, we've also got uh, your source color space and source gamma space, which again does not change your actual color space, it just pushes information through. So if we need to make sure we're pushing through say ACES, we can just select our ACES and we'll make sure we push that data through so when it comes out, it's coming out as the ACES color space metadata, not the actual color, just that metadata is getting pushed along. And we also have uh, the same checkboxes for remove curve and pre-divide and post multiply. Now your format where we were before, this is just where you select the actual what, what layer of that EXR you want visible. And your settings are just like your median uh, settings. You're applying your mask inverted. It'll have additional settings if you do connect a mask or multiply by the mask in hide income connections. So where this loader node comes in handy is say for an EXR, you need to uh, composite all your EXR, which I'm not gonna do in this video. Maybe I'll make another video because it's extremely long and it's, uh, it's, it's a big process, but we'll just copy this. And we're going to use a channel boolean instead of a merge node. We're gonna send this to our background, send this to our foreground. Now in this channel boolean, we're gonna go ahead and add our channels and we're gonna do nothing with our alpha channels. Just for, let, let me show you uh, the reason. If I mouse this over down here in the bottom, if you look at our alpha is 2.0, which is wrong. Our alpha really should be sitting at 1.0 for our overall alpha. So we're gonna do nothing so it doesn't combine those alphas. Now it's sitting at 1.0. So this top loader node, what we do is go to our uh, channels and say we just want to uh, change something from that emitter, that little light that's coming from that, that sphere there. So we'll look for our emission Mission R, Mission G, and Mission B. So if we look at this node alone, that's all that's coming through is our emission layer. So what we could do is say we just wanted to add a little blurriness to uh, this light to make it look like it's shining a little brighter. We can add a blur, let's add a Gaussian blur. in in and you can raise it up go to our settings change our blend so now our lights uh glowing a little bit and i'm not going to play it all back it's going to take a while to cache so that's our loader node so if you need to uh ever bring in files straight from your disk as opposed to bringing in from your uh, media library you're going to use your loader node and it'll give you all the same options as your media end node. So see you in the next one.